I used to be a huge fan of Justin McCartney. I don't think he knows that. I might tell him later. But yeah, I used to be a huge fan. And so, yeah, like if you would have told me a few years ago I'd be playing a show with him, I would have been like, you're lying. Was he always your celebrity crush? He was when I was younger. I totally, yeah. Who is now? Um, who is now? I don't really have one. I guess, uh, yeah, I don't really have one. I, w I wish I could say that I had one, but I don't. Are you doing a whole concert tonight or just a few songs? I'm doing a like ten songs tonight, so it's kind of like it's it's a it's a short set, but compared to like touring and things like that, but like um, it's it's a lot, so it's not it's not just one. And so you just finished doing Camp Rock too? How was that? I did Camp Rock too. I think is gonna is gonna shock people. Um, I we're all like we're dancing so much. There's there's flips. People are spinning on their heads. The music is incredible, and it's just I'm so excited. What does it mean to you that, to be asked to do the show? It's a great charity, and actually this is the first. Time I've ever took part in anything with City of Hope, and uh, I learned so much, really, because I, I, I actually got the chance to visit uh, the City of Hope and, uh, a couple weeks ago, and uh, the facilities are amazing. It just blew my mind, and I walked away from the whole experience just a whole other man. Um, I got the chance to meet several of the kids, and uh, you know that's to me the most important part. I have two younger siblings of my own. That, um, I don't know what I'd do without, and uh, I met a couple of kids, and uh, it was just fun to change their 10 minutes, that 10 minutes, you know, for them to take the, their mind off of whatever they're going through, and it changed, you know, my whole perspective as well, so. You get to perform with two beautiful girls. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's pretty cool. Are you guys friends? Yeah, I actually just ran into to Demi backstage, and uh, I've known Miley for a long time. Um, you know, she's, she's crazy busy right now with her big single on the radio, so I've just been home for a little while. I'm, I'm back in the studio writing and working on a new album so um, yeah yeah no it's great to, to see the girls I haven't seen them in a while cool what's your plans for Halloween Halloween I think I'm gonna go with a, I'm, gonna, I'm a buddy of mine uh, and I were, I'm gonna do a Walter Matthau from Grumpy Old Men yes I'm gonna try and do like the prosthetics and like get like really I just want to be unrecognizable like walk around like just like a real grumpy old guy you're, so, you're gonna, gonna go I'm gonna, all out I'm gonna go all out and give it a go can you talk about your upcoming uh, television and film gigs Anything yeah, yeah well we got Alvin and the Chipmunks too coming out <laughs> squeak bowl which is gonna be cool Theodore I played Theodore um, and we got the Amy Poehler is now on Anna Ferris and the Chipettes so that'll be a big release at the end of the year and then I just got I was just got back from New York I was there for six weeks working with um, Brian Gulabov who's an acclaimed writer he uh, wrote Basketball Diaries and K-Pax um, a story about uh, his high school experience as an editor of a newspaper and um, it's looking very good for Sundance so that was a really fun experience if you could be stuck in an elevator with anyone who would it be dead or alive uh, <laughs> John Lennon, um, toss up between John Lennon and uh, John Lennon and uh, I'm gonna go with John Lennon. Keep this. <laughs> keep it, keep it. Do you have any embarrassing moments you want to share? Um, yeah, I'm sure there's plenty. <laughs> I um, it wasn't. I don't know if it was embarrassing. I just kind of didn't know what to do. I, I was in a studio, this is like three or four years ago, I was working on my second album, and I was at the uh, Henson Studios, which is like a legendary studio, it's been around forever, and I was in Studio B, and I noticed on Studio A, on the wall, it said McCartney, and I was like, oh, they got that wrong, I'm in Studio B, and I'm sitting on the couch in this sort of like, uh, in this room that's open for everybody to just kind of come in and out of, grab a snack or whatever, and I'm sitting there with a pencil and a pad, and um, I hear somebody, I hear a very familiar voice humming. Uh, and a mandolin like being played in the background. Like, I was playing a mandolin. Like it's just a, a strange instrument to be just walking around playing. And uh, and it's Paul McCartney comes around like comes out of the studio. And I was like, ah, ah, ah. I was like, whatever I'm doing on this pad <laughs> is nothing compared to what's going on in that man's head. Um, so, but it was a little embarrassing that I couldn't form a proper sentence. But you were in an elevator with him. I, w I wasn't in an elevator, no. And Jesse, who are your inspirations growing up? Uh, as a kid, Michael was one of my biggest, and uh, a lot of R&B guys, Ray Charles and Stevie and uh, all, the, all the legends. Do you have a guilty TV pleasure? Um, oh, man. Oh, we're definitely going there. Uh, Food Network is definitely one of them. What's your favorite show? Let's see, I like Iron Chef. Um, I, I mean, I, I'm just a big fan of food, and I'm a big fan of Anthony Bourdain. I love his uh, Cook's Tour and all the, all the books that he's written. Um, love food. And I, I'm sort of a, I shouldn't say it, but the Real Housewives of Orange County. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is the 
song Obsessed mean to you? Uh, I wrote Obsessed because um, I think that's like what every girl's like fantasy is like to feel is, is to be like you can't sleep and you can't eat and whatever. And uh, I'm not really like that mushy of a person. I have I have like a heart, but I'm not that mushy. So uh, I kind of wrote that for like all the girls that want to feel like that. And, and even if you're you're not that way, I think everyone wants to feel that feeling at some point. Me too. How do, how do people who battle life-threatening illnesses um, inspire you and encourage you? It inspires me because uh, you know I hear people tell me all the time that like I'm their hero and that they look up to me. And then I go to these children's hospitals, you know, and I look at them and I see that right that's my hero because I don't know what I would do if that something like that happened to me or my family and especially families that are so strong and stay together because not only does it you know it affects the kid but it affects the family around them and especially the siblings and so when I go and meet these kids not only do I meet the ones that are being affected with illness but I want to meet the ones that you know are surrounded with that because it is it can like really take over your whole body just as a family. How did you get involved with this charity? I've been involved with City of Hope for uh, about like three years now and they contacted me because um, I've always wanted to be involved with something that's like not just for now and not something that's just going to deal with the kids of the present that are dealing with illness, but it's it's a cure and it's for the ones that, you know, 10, 15, 20, thousands of years from now, you know, it's it's affecting them and, and their lives. Your grandfather inspired you to work for this charity, correct? Yeah. And if you could have one more conversation with him right now, what would you want to have? I think I would just ask him... Um, you know, I would, want, I would want more, like, guidance, I think. I think there's, like, so many questions that as you get older, you know, was, I was, like, 12 years old when, when he died or 13. And so, like, now as you grow up, I think that that's what I would want to ask, you know, how to get involved and, you know, maybe what his main struggles was on, you know, on his, you know, like, final times, maybe what, what was the most, you know, hard thing for him. And so for the people that are dealing with cancer now, I can, you know, help them more through those, those times. Is there anyone you'd like to be stuck in an elevator with, dead or alive? Um, maybe John Lennon. I would ask him for all the rights to his songs, and I would recut them all. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Okay.